The Batman, First Night, Issue 2. Dan mm-hmm. Jurgens writing with Mike Perkins on the art. So, this leaves off. The cliffhanger last time was Batman being pushed into the electric chair. And mm-hmm. he does, like, we get this great reaction. There's almost like a, it's, it's like a Hitchcock, like, woman screaming and gasping mm-hmm. on the, the front, or the, not the front page, but the, the, cut, uh, the first page, sorry, of yeah. the book, where she's just looking in, in horror uh, Mike Perkins really nailing it again here with, with this yep. issue. Uh, they do explain kind of retroactively why he could have survived, which is, oh, because the power was just out, it didn't have all the juice in it, so it, you know, mm-hmm. that, that explains it. It's like, okay, okay, you give me a bit of a reason. <laughs> and and at first I was like, oh, this is this, yeah, whatever. And then we see how jacked up Bruce has become <laughs> in, in the following pages. They're like, oh yeah, okay, this did a number on him. All right, we're, you know. Oh yeah, he's uh, right, glad. like he snuck out of the the execution room, but yeah, there's that great mm-hmm. full page where he's kind of like like stumbling through this the, yeah. the, the, the cell area, and there's like uh-huh. smoke coming off of his arms. Uh-huh. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's a great page. Hooey. It's a great yeah. page. Uh, yeah, I mean this issue is really good again, uh, much like the first mm-hmm. issue, where it kind of advances all the little things it was doing. Uh, Gordon notably is the one who comes in and turns off the electric chair. This idea that. Okay, mm-hmm. he's not working with Batman yet, but he's like, hey, we're not just killing a man. You know, you can't just decide to yeah. execute someone who's not been tried. So, uh, mm-hmm. less of that. Uh, although Bruce does steal his car, so Gordon's car is missing for like half the issue until it just miraculously mm-hmm. shows back in front of the police station. And he's like, did anyone see who brought it back here? It's like, nope, no one saw it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Was that pesky I also like Batman? That, I also like that Gordon kind of threatens the warden by going, it's a depression. Uh, I'm sure we can find someone to fill your job. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I like that Gordon does have an edge still, you know, and then yeah. we find out that through through conversation that he was in World War One and survived like one of the biggest, nastiest trench battles. Um, and, you know, and he's just like, if I can do that, I can do anything. So it really, really gets at the heart of what makes Gordon work. Yeah, it makes sense that in this time period, he would have been in World War One for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, as a, so when you see Bruce back at the manor. Uh, mm-hmm. the top of that page where you see the manor I love the colouring on that where it's just all purples uh-huh. and black uh, it looks gorgeous Yeah. Uh, but yeah he, he tries to go into like a, a bathtub and he's trying to like deal with his burns and he's clearly struggling uh, mm-hmm. here uh, meanwhile we see the gangster the voice who's the one because that was our big part of the plot that we've not really yeah. mentioned yet is that the bad guys are reanimating recently executed prisoners as zombie mm-hmm. soldiers that was a big part of the plot of the first issue mm-hmm. and he's upset about uh the batman we have to kill him and we also have to kill gordon because he's get, putting his nose in it where it doesn't belong so it sets up the a threat's coming for for mm-hmm. them so yeah it's all very very good uh yeah so uh, one of the actors, the woman specifically, comes back to yep. see Bruce. Remember, they came in the first issue and like asked to have their their movie funded. Yep, and um, and it's gone well. So she's come in essentially to thank Bruce. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, through her name's Julie Madison, and so she she shows up at the manor and uh, breaks in. Let's just call it as she yes. breaks into the manor. She, <laughs> she wanders in through an open door, right? Because she. Um, she find a key? No, she picks up the newspaper because she notices that the newspaper hasn't been brought in. And right, so she, yeah, the door opens and she starts wondering around, like, what is a man, like a single man, what does he need this, you know, big space for? And then she ends up finding him. She goes, you know, she ends up, yeah, she goes snooping through the house. There's like uh-huh. a whole page where she's like commenting on a bunch of different stuff. She's like, mm-hmm. like oh, look at all this like art deco stuff. Look at all these books in the library. Mm-hmm. Uh, look at this big gun rack that's here. Yeah. A lot of, you know, it's, again, it's just like all of classic swords and guns in a collection kind of thing yes. on the wall. Uh, and, uh, but, but yeah, and so because she also mentions all in the library, all the books on like uh, medical stuff, but it hasn't been touched by years. So it's like, what is with this guy? You know, so there's a sense of mystery around Bruce Wayne. Yeah. I mean, we get it, though, because it's obviously his dad's mm-hmm. books, right? Because right. his dad was a doctor. Mm-hmm. Uh, it makes sense. Uh, which is even reiterated, uh, because when she finds mm-hmm. him and he's all burned and he's like, oh, I uh, got shocked by the fuse box. And she's like, on the back? <laughs> yeah. You're you're also, you're a millionaire. Why didn't you hire somebody? He's like, yeah, because I want to learn, you know? And he's, all these just stupid lies yeah. that he's trying to maintain being Batman. But, yeah. but she's not, I like, but that's not even in her 
mindset. She's just like, what's with this rich dude that's all burned up? Yeah, and like I was saying, though, it reiterates the whole, like, the backstory of his father, because he's got, like, mm-hmm. this pace there for the burns, and yeah. she's like, what's this? And he's like, oh, my dad was into, like, looking into, like, new medicine techniques from other mm-hmm. parts of the world, and this was something that he, like, ex- yeah. you know, researched or whatever. So, it's like, okay, so you're reiterating this stuff, and she makes him some tea, and mm-hmm. uh, basically, we learn a few things here about her, that her and the other actor are not a couple, but they pretend to be as a cover mm-hmm. for him, presumably because he's gay, and it's yep. the 1930s, so, you know, or 40s, whatever yeah. they're at. She's, she's his cover, and on top of it, it when they go to places together, it keeps the skeevier parts of the industry. You know, there's like a barrier from other men. She says, I think oh, yeah, directors, yeah. you know. So uh, he's like, hey, would you like to do something? Well, she's like, I wouldn't want to break the illusion that I've created with my friend, mm-hmm. but if you want to do something on the hush, on quiet, mm-hmm. uh, we could do something. So yep. says up a date. Uh, there's a great page here where Batman, who's covered in bandages for all the burns, uh, mm-hmm. goes to the bat suit. Uh, really good stuff, and yep. this is uh, where he goes out in the night. He's going through the city. This is where we get a big, the second attempt on the the, the mayor's life happens because mm-hmm. they tried to kill him last issue, and it happens again here with this uh, mobster. Was it Johnny? Johnny the Whip. Johnny the Whip. That's what it was. Uh, mm-hmm. They just start opening Tommy guns on the the mayor's car in, on a bridge and a plane. Right, they're bringing a plane across the bridge. Yeah, like an old biplane. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah shooting shooting at him and uh, yeah uh so a really fun action sequence yeah no again the art here really makes it like the mm-hmm. the glee in this gangster's face as he's firing a tommy gun is so well drawn then mm-hmm. you see it batman felt... in the shadows above him in the same panel yeah the 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 his face so johnny the whip and then like the zombies it seemed very dick tracy like they're very like cartoony but like on purpose um Cause he looks like a like his you know his haircut and everything. Um, again, it just it reminded me of like Flat Top from from Dick Tracy. Yeah, uh, great full page spread of Batman jumping down <sighs> at them as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, all glorious stuff. Uh, action scene plays out, and yeah, uh, ultimately uh, Batman does like end up in the river. Like he ends up like mm-hmm. diving for his life when they're shooting yep. at him. And he ends up in the river, and he ends up coming out of the river uh, with like a father and daughter, like with a with a campfire, yeah. and the daughter's like scared of him, and the dad's like threatening him with a bat, and mm-hmm. Batman's like, "I just want some heat from the fire. The the water's made yeah. me, you know, I'm I'm scared of hypothermia, hypothermia. here." <laughs> yeah, uh... but they just kind of chase him off. So he ends up going to help the the rabbi that we met last mm-hmm. issue. Well, this was the other character they introduced. Uh, mm-hmm. And they reference, you know, what's going on in in Germany and in Europe at this time. Of course, last issue yep. as well. Uh, but Batman ends up helping him with a couple of muggers try to grab him. And not only does he end up going back with the rabbi to the to the synagogue for heat, but he ends up taking his mask off and kind of opening up. And mm-hmm. he's doing this interesting thing because there's no Alfred in this book, and it's kind of like he needs to unload to someone and like yep. have someone he can talk to. So this rabbi is kind of becoming the <sighs> the Alfred parallel in a lot mm-hmm. of ways. Yeah, because he, he even mentions to himself when he goes back to the the manor early on that even a private nurse he can't trust to keep the secret. Yeah. Right? So, you know, but this man who's a man of faith, who, you know, because Batman asked him to keep it, you know, he will. So he feels like he can talk to him because they, they are almost kindred spirits. You know, they yeah. both want to do good in Gotham in their own way. It's almost like confession as well, which I believe mm-hmm. they're supposed to. That's supposed to be a, a confidential thing. That, yes, I yeah. do. That said, though, I bet all the priests are all sitting around making fun of everyone who comes at a confessional. <laughs> the good ones aren't. The good ones, I'm sure, keep it to themselves. Yeah, all two uh, percent of the good ones. Are. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, no. <laughs> so, uh, Batman goes back to the the brothel that was also introduced in mm-hmm. the first issue. And starts asking about this Johnny the Whip and if he's, you know, been talking about where, where he's going, what his plans are. Mm-hmm. Uh, the brothel owner's not happy about Batman being there. And Batman's like, hey, I let this place operate. And uh, keep in mind, mm-hmm. like, you know, y- your last name is is Jewish. So what you're going to do for me is you're also going to send a couple of your goons down to that synagogue. And mm-hmm. that place is under your protection now. And if anything happens to that, that synagogue or that rabbi, like, I'll be back and you'll be paying for it. So 
Yep. Uh, throwing his weight around a little bit, but obviously for a, a good cause, uh, yeah. shall we say. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. This uh, is definitely not our typical Batman story, right? No, no. People, people are getting shot and killed routinely. Like, all the police that were on the mayor's escort on the bridge, I don't think a lot of them make it through. It's like just Corden and maybe a couple others, you know. Um, and yeah, yeah, Batman and doesn't save everyone, for sure. No. Like he's not getting there in time, yeah. And and here he's allowing the, you know, the guy to run his cat house, you know, because it's it's important to, like, the information flow and what stuff, or and whatnot. And so, yeah, this is definitely Batman that's that's fine with looking the other way. So, uh, very, very interesting that Jurgens is going this way. Yeah, and our big thing towards the end of the book is that Johnny the Whip and his zombie goons show up to kill mm -hmm. Gordon. Uh, mm -hmm. and Gordon like holds his own a little bit he actually blows off uh -huh. the head of one of the zombies uh, yeah. a nice, nice panel that is nice bit of gore and then Batman comes in obviously to help save the day and they're sort of fighting side by side and then eventually you know again one of the gangsters gets out a Tommy gun and starts blasting away the art in that page is also glorious you, mm -hmm. can, you can see his shell casings coming up from the gun and obviously mm -hmm. the, the orange of the, the gunfire really contrasts with all the purple and blues of the nighttime colors yeah really really good um and batman gets grabbed at one point uh you know he, he's you know he's almost shot the, the guy mm -hmm. johnny's got a gun to the back of his neck and it's only because gordon shoots the bad guy and saves mm -hmm. him uh and it takes a kind of an interesting turn here where gordon goes up to him and says hey like if you're going to keep doing this if you're going to keep trying to help like you are you have to arm yourself. You need to get mm -hmm. a gun. It's not going to work if you don't. You're going to get screwed. And Batman ends the scene by saying, I'll think about what you said. And yeah. the last page of this book is Batman going to that big wall of like like antique guns that are in his in his mansion. Again, presumably something his father collected. Yeah. And the final panel of this book is Batman holding a gun, contemplating if he should use it. So we're getting a little bit of Batman year two here, where uh, mm -hmm. I, presumably the end of this story is going to be Batman realizing that he doesn't want to use a gun yeah but they're they're teasing this idea of okay this is Batman who's just started doing this I think he mentioned earlier on to the rabbi that he's only been uh -huh. doing this for like three months or something like that yeah it's it's still new because you know Gordon's even telling him like um or or he or the rabbi's like what you're doing as one person isn't enough you know but he's like yeah but it's if it's enough that I do it you know so it's almost like Bruce is like, yeah, but this is more about me than anything, which I think is a curious admission. Um, but but yeah, it, it is still really early in his run. Yeah. So I'm really curious where this goes. Like, I, I, mm -hmm. I feel like some people might expect uh, me to get mad at the Ascending. I'm not because one, it's an Elseworld and two, because like, who knows what the, the final point of this is going to be like. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, hell, maybe this will become like this, this weird Batman story where it is about him, you know, adapting to the times of the rough 40s and mm -hmm. going about with a tommy gun well, but i don't think it will i feel like this is going mm -hmm. to lead somewhere yeah because it feels like this batman so he doesn't want to use a gun and i feel like is this two or three or is this three or four issues i actually you know? don't remember i don't know okay because I, I can definitely see it ending with him being like well this is why i can't use guns because there's too much crossfire yeah you know what i mean like you're putting too many other people at, at risk when when you engage in this because he does mention when he's talking kind of to himself that he doesn't want what happened to him to happen to other people yeah that's yeah. why he's doing this so you know um but it's also jurgens being the you know the comic book historian that he is that uh, for a period early on in the books batman did use a gun and, and the only reason i knew that know this is from having those stupid conversations uh, of certain movies that came out you know uh, more recently, uh, of Batman using guns, and people would always pull from, like, the 1940s, like, that's a completely different Batman, though. This is not the Batman that, you know, yeah. uh, in the, modern times. The characters you know? have evolved. Superman also yeah. killed people in those early yeah. Superman stories. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean we should have that now, either. <laughs> right. It's It's been a part of the character longer than him using the gun, right? So, so I'm wondering if this is going to play off of that, where, you know, this is why Batman doesn't use a gun, even for the times. I, I suspect that's going to be the point of the story, mm -hmm. is that he's going to even maybe try using one, and yep. something might go wrong, he'll regret yep. something, or, you know, I, I, but I suspect that's what this is building to. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting place for this to go, though. It feels like it's a very interesting hook to have at the end of the second issue, for yeah. sure. Um, if anything, the only thing I'm surprised about in this issue, because I, I like that they're 
there's th I almost feel like it has to be four issues and not three, just because I feel like it's the pacing. The pacing, but just it sells mm -hmm. so many side characters where okay, he's got he's got a date now with this movie star. Yeah. We've got this rabbi character. We've got all the stuff with Garden, and we've got all the stuff with the villains, with the, these like reanimating, like you know, ex executed criminals that. Because yeah. it was a lot to deal with if there's only one more issue, but I mean, maybe there's only one more. Yeah, there's only one more issue because I just looked huh. okay. uh, uh, forward that it is uh, the fiery final issue, um, and that's issue three. Okay, well, uh, well, we'll see how it wraps up then. And it's, and it's coming out a oh, no, that's final order. Uh, cover H July, so it'll be out in July. So we have a little bit of time. Um, I'm trying to see what know. date. If the cover date's July, then that means it's going to be yeah. out in May. May, right? So yeah, so it's next month. Then. Next month, yeah. Yeah, there it is, May twenty first. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, they must have let Perkins get ahead then, because there's no way yeah. he was doing this month to month uh, and getting no. it out on time. <laughs> yeah, it's like what forty eight pages. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's at least yeah. it's more than double it's a, a, a regular chunk. issue. That that said, the Perkins art is spot on. Like, oh, it's it, fantastic. It is, it's he draws this period very well because like the the women and the way that their expressions are, like he brought up the Hitchcock. Yeah. face right uh when when batman goes to the brothel and comes in through the window we're looking at the, the the woman's looking in the mirror and so we we get behind her head but also her reaction and it's everything's very well uh and then uh very well done and then like the monster men look the longer it goes the more disgusting they look for sure right? yeah which yeah. almost sells the idea that they're decomposing still yeah yeah <laughs> so he's just you know you know, here I thought his work on Swamp Thing was going to be the, the pinnacle, and here we go, he just keeps getting better. Yeah, no, that, that's legitimately is better than his art in Swamp Thing, and I love his art in Swamp <laughs> Thing, but this is just another yep. level. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. Gordon looks like a sort of old-timey sort of 40s movie character, like, everything's just, mm -hmm. is, he's just nailing everything. Uh, the art is, like, I think the writing in here is pretty solid, like, the, the writing's like mm -hmm. a solid 8, but I think the art is, like, really elevating it, it more so. It picks it up. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. What were you giving the Batman first night issue to? I'm, I'm going to give this a nine. Yeah, I, I can't argue with that, honestly. I think it's... Yeah, it's, it's such a gorgeous book. I, it's hard not to recommend it.